Okay, we're back again. Uh, this time we shift over to um, one of my other collections. And this is just an unboxing video for some of the Warlord Games um, ships. Now, I'm a, I'm a bit of a ship nut. I, I love model ships. I love painting ships, although obviously not the best painter. Um, Victory at Sea really struck me as a game that I wanted to get into. Uh, I do tend to support Warlord Games a lot because I just find that Although the prices are creeping up, they're creeping up, and their service lately has been pretty terrible. Um, I do like supporting a company that expands uh, the interest of uh, historical gaming. So, for instance, you know the games that they've come out with, like Victory at Sea, Blood Red Skies, Bolt Action, Cruel Seas. Um, these types of games, you just don't see other companies doing that for historical games. So they're trying their their best to make historical wargaming. A little more mainstream so I do tend to support companies like that and it's either these guys getting my money or GW um, although I really wish that their prices would come down just a little bit um, some of the value that you get out of this company uh, these days is kind of hit or miss sometimes it's amazing sometimes it's oh gosh I don't know for instance I did buy the American Civil War um, the starter set the epic one the 10 millimeter one or the 15 or 13 whatever it is i did buy it and i was planning to do an unboxing and i still might but there's no point in unboxing a, a game that has basically one sprue times 24 what's the point of unboxing that it's just one sprue there is some terrain in there too but eh, there's other channels i can do that better but today we're focusing on uh, my reinforcements for victory at sea now i collect japanese and i collect the royal navy um I do have the American ships that came in the starter set, so I did pick up myself um, the Yorktown. You can see here, just because I love the name of it, and it's featured in so many of the movies that I really loved from my childhood. I just couldn't, I couldn't not do it. And then I picked up some German ships, uh, specifically the Prince Eugen and the Neisenau. Uh, maybe pronounced that wrong. And my local uh, gaming store, Meeple Mark, they threw in this uh, promo Altmark tanker. So that is really handy. You know, and I never noticed that there was a that there was a handle on that. Oh, it's like an ammo pack. <laughs> anyway, sorry, distracted. Um, so we're just going to take a look at the Prince Eugen, the Nice Now, the Yorktown, and for my Japanese force, the Akagi. Now, I I am collecting the Germans, but I don't intend to focus on the Germans. I just wanted to play out some scenarios, so I will eventually get the Graf's Bay. Graf Spay, um, I just got the individual ships instead of buying the actual starter set. I didn't want to spend over a hundred dollars. I think it was 120, I don't know, a lot of money anyway for the starter set. So I decided just to buy the ships that I wanted. So I bought the Bismarck, the Neisenau, the Prince Eugen, and the what was the name of the other one that I got? I haven't got it yet. I don't know, maybe it's upstairs. The um the Scharnhorst. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to pause the video here and I'm going to go try and find the Sharn Horse. I think he's upstairs. Okay, I'm back and indeed I do. Here he is. The Shoops. The Sharn Horse. So we'll go through these one at a time. I'm going to start with the uh, most boring one first. I guess it would be the Altmark. So I don't know what kind of resin this is. Oh, it looks like the, looks like the white resin. I wonder if there's going to be any mispacks, because I've been getting a lot of mispacks from Warlord Games lately. So, oh, hey, it's a, an oil tanker? Oil tanker. Two different... Mary... I wonder what this is now. It says Altmark on the... Although it might be... What the heck is this? Another... Victory C Altmark model. So it is the Altmark, apparently, and I guess that probably is an oil tanker. It's weird to have... different people pack... Hmm, I thought the uh, I thought the stack card would have Altmark on it. I think this is the wrong, unless I'm wrong, this is the wrong card. U.S. Navy, 
Japanese Navy, Royal Navy. There is no German Navy. Definitely says Altmark on there, right? But it's in the white resin, which is the, the resin that I love. If you see my other videos, you know I complain about the other resins. So, oh, nice detail on that ship. The portholes. It's nice. Not too sure about this oil tanker card. It might be a mispack. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, there's that's her. We'll do the Scharnhorst and Nice now at the same time, and we'll focus on the Prince Eugen. Let's see, Prince Eugen. Please don't miss pack. Please don't miss pack. It's sad when you have to say that, I guess. Eh? So, there's the ship. Here's the cards. You know, I never realized until I started doing these videos how hard it is to actually see what you're doing over the camera. I could look through the camera, but there's something weird I can't focus on. Uh, okay. Admiral Hipper class heavy cruiser. So yeah, that is that, that does seem like it. Yes. Blue Guard Prince Eugen. Hmm. Sometimes when I'm when I'm uh, looking at this game, I'll just get my pen out here. I'm looking at this game and I'm looking at the damage dice versus the attack dice. Like the attack dice makes sense. You know, two barrels per gun, two dice, that makes sense. Sometimes I wonder about how Warlord Games goes around uh, these 8-inch guns because sometimes I've noticed, especially on some of the British ships, the damage dice they get doesn't equal what I think. So a 15-inch, a 15-inch gun on the, I can't remember exactly now. Don't quote me. I can't. A 15-inch gun on the, on the hood gets I think one damage dice as well. Maybe. Anyway, I could be wrong, but it almost seems that these damage dice is just not enough for some of these ships. Like, it makes sense for the Admiral Hipper here, but very confusing. And the, the range, well, that's a big, it's a long range. That 8-inch that, that, that gun, I think, outranges some of the British 14-inch guns. Hmm, I'd have to look closer at what they have. But anyway, that's the stack card. Here's the model itself. Anything else on there? No. You're done. Oh, yes, white. I love the white. Admiral Hipper class. Prince Eugen 1940. I mean, it's just such, they're just such clean models. You know, I have a 3D printer here at home. Actually, I have two of them, but I just can't get the, the STL files to look this good. So although I could print off all these ships, I still support the companies that make them because this is an investment after all. And I know a lot of people don't like these cookie bases, but I love them. You know, it's funny, when they made um, when they made Black Seas, the ships didn't come with any bases, and then people complained. Well, I have to grab the side of the ship to move it. And then when they put the World War II ships on bases, people complained. And, you know, it's, I guess two different crowds, maybe two different nautical nautical crowds. But I mean, here's the Prince Eugen. It's a nice ship. Let's see it up next to uh, the oil tanker. Quite a bit bigger. And then we have the guns. I don't know if we need to open these or not, but they're metal. I, I almost wish, you know, sometimes they send like the Japanese cruisers that, and stuff. They come with uh, resin pieces and the barrels are impossible to straighten out. So when I see the metal ones, I'm like, oh, phew, if it's metal or the white metal. But then getting these bloody things off, like snipping them off here and snipping off these little um, nibs at the top, you end up damaging the barrels anyway. So... I don't know what I want. Something to complain about, I guess. But there we go. There's the there's the barrels for the Prince Eugen. Beautiful ship. I love that it's in white metal. Uh, now let's do these two. We'll do the... We'll see if there's any difference. Now, I don't think there should be any difference between the stack cards, but we'll check. And here is the other one. Oh, it's in a red bag. That's easy. It's handy to know. So this one is the Sharnhorst. Link. I'm trying to make my videos less, no, not as long, but I blab on so long, it's hard to. Okay, here's a Sharnhorst. 11 inch guns. 
74 hole. Some upgrades there. 425 points. Here's the model. Is it white? Please be white. I can't tell inside this pink. It kind of is. Yeah, yeah, it is. For some reason, this pink thing made it look gray. So here's the Scharnhorst. Wait, is this the front? <coughs> Excuse me. Can't be caught coughing these days. Yikes. Well, what a nice ship. Oh, my goodness. Look at all the portholes there. Oh, beautiful ship. How much bigger is it than the Eugen? Yeah, gotta be. Uh, now we'll see. The metal bits. Big chunky bit there. We'll just leave him aside there for a second. Hope I don't get these pieces mixed up. There shouldn't be any difference, but you never know. Here's the card. For the Nizanel. I hope I pronounced that right. I have no idea. Gnizanel or Nizanel? I don't know. Yeah, okay, here we go. Same points. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's the same card. Of course. Silly me. Why would it be different? Yes, that makes no sense. Oh, wow. There's a brain fart right there. It's the ship class. Not two different classes. Now, are the models exactly the same? Let's see here. This one's way whiter than this one. Two different types of resin used, I guess. Oh, I don't like that. This is the white one. This one, here's the one I like. Well, the models do look uh, sufficiently different. For instance, what is this big chunk of resin in here in the center? That's not in this one. Yeah, the model ship models are totally different. Also, the, uh, the Scharnhorst has much deeper um, things here for the turrets to sit in. Much easier magnetized. Not that I will, but you could. So this is the Nizanel. And this is the Scharnhorst. I, get, I might have had that wrong earlier. Yeah, the models are sufficiently... Look at the holes, the depth of the holes on this this one here versus that one there. Oh, is there a... Um, I wonder why this is. I wonder why they decided to put some of the, the tower here, or the funnel, I guess, here and not on there. I don't know enough about these ships, uh, although I, I just said to myself earlier that I'm a nautical nut, but I can't be if I don't know the difference between these two, two, these two famous ships, but... The detail in this one here, the, uh, which one's this? The Scharnhorst is actually way crisper than, well, I shouldn't say way crisper, it's noticeably crisper than this one. Sorry for my nail there, I was painting all day. Hmm. That is interesting, and you can see the different color now, a little clearer, is it going to focus on me here? Yes, yeah, sorry about the bad focus there, folks. But now you can see, definitely, I. this is the white resin that I like. Hmm. Much confusion. Much confusion. <laughs> I've actually completely forgotten which ship is which now. I don't know. I guess there's maybe it says on here somewhere, I hope. Scharnhorst, okay. Even the um, even these pieces here, maybe they are totally different types. Anyway, I don't know. That's a research for another time, I guess. But there you go. There's the two of those. Um, now let's work on the Akagi. I'll just take it off screen here while I open it. I usually open my stuff first, but in this case, I didn't want to make two separate videos for the aircraft cars, although I'm approaching 15 minutes so I probably should have anyway back on screen here we go Boom. there's that oh this is a big model oh my goodness 
the Akagi. 17 flights. Oh, it's got a lot of guns on it. Oh, wow. It comes in. <laughs> it comes in many pieces. Uh-oh. Better not lose these. There we go. Here's the bow. So next to the... You know, to me it's amazing. I think, if I'm wrong, this was initially going to be a battle cruiser. Look at the size difference. Come on, focus in for me there, please. Oh, nice guns along the edge. Portholes are okay. Looks like the grayish resin, not the white one. You can do it, camera. I believe in you. I pressed a button and I made it way worse. Hmm. Okay, here's the flight deck bit. Well, that's a lot of intricate detail there. A little bit of mold slip. Probably not a big deal. I guess that sits kind of like that. Some cleanup needs to be done there. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like, uh, oh, we got to file that bit out there for them to snap in. But they kind of fit like that. It's a big ship. Holy moly. Holy mackerel. Okay, okay, here's the pieces to support the flight deck. And what looks like uh, the funnel. And some other bobs, bits and bobs. Now what is, look at this. Oh, okay. Should be easy enough to get rid of that bit. <laughs> yeah, the antenna. There's the uh, conning tower. Anyway, that's a, a really nice model. We'll just keep it here kind of off to the side while we look at the Yorktown. I got a lot of cleaning up to do later. There's a lot of stuff on the table here. Um, Gotta hurry it up before I hit 20 minutes. Before I even bore myself. Yoink. Okay, here she is. Yorktown, one of my favorite ships from World War II. Let's do a look at the card. Oh, oh. at least you put it in upside down. I have to physically open this one. So the Kagi had 17 flights and the Yorktown has, do, 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 wow, 24 flights. Less guns, but I mean, <laughs> an aircraft. How much was the Akagi? The Akagi was 250 versus 280. 51 hull, oh, 86 hull. Okay, wow, well, okay, so it's a much tougher type of ship. Is it that much smaller? You know what, it is. Wow, it is quite a bit smaller. I did not expect that. I don't know if I can get these on the screen here for you that well, but there we go. You know, it's not terribly smaller, but it is definitely smaller. So, I'll just take that out of here. I'll take a look at the Yorktown here up front, up close. Clean, a very clean ship. Well, I don't have the Essex, so I can't compare it to the Essex. Um, for this game, I intend to buy the, um, the 1942 type ships. So, um, what's that? That's the Yorktown, the Hornet, the Wasp, and the Lexington. So when they come out, I'll order them as well and have the kind of the iconic, the wars in danger of being lost ships. Midway, Coral Sea, all that stuff. Later on in 1944, the war basically decided it's just more of a, you know, drawing it out to a conclusion. So I don't find the naval gaming in that period to be a whole lot of fun. There's 1942 is definitely a lot better. So here's the conning tower and some of the pieces. Compared to the Japanese, how did the Japanese ever do anything? Most, I guess most of their stuff was below the deck. Look at the size difference in the conning towers. Oh, 
I wonder what, what, what the reason for that was. Most of the operation was done in the guts of the ship, I guess. Versus um, the Americans that had it all up on, mostly up on top. Hmm. Anyway, there you have it. You have the Yorktown, one of my favorite ships, the Akagi. It's kind of like the flagship at Midway, I believe. Uh, you have the Scharnhorst with its pieces. You have the Nisenau with its pieces. Very surprised to see that these are two different casts. I, maybe I just don't know enough about the German ships. Uh, we have the Prince Eugen, heavy cruiser, and then we have the bonus promo oil tanker Altmark. Although I'm not sure, maybe someone can tell me in the comments, am I supposed to get an Altmark card or is it an oil tanker card? Because I'm slightly confused. Anyway, there we go. There's all the ships on pack that I have. I have, um, I don't think I've ordered any more right now, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for joining in and we're at 21 minutes. Have a guys a good day.